President Trump arrived in Europe Tuesday ahead of the annual NATO summit in Belgium. Before takeoff, the president had some harsh words for U.S. allies regarding defense spending and trade. But he praised Russia's Vladimir Putin ahead of their meeting next week. CBS News Chief White House Correspondent Major Garrett is traveling with the president. President Trump touched down in Brussels this afternoon ahead of a potentially contentious NATO summit where he's expected to push member nations to spend more on defense. We pay far too much and they pay far too little. But we will work it out. So far this year, only five of 29 NATO countries, including the U.S., spent the 2 percent of gross domestic product on defense, the NATO standard. The president has lashed out at countries that fall short. And we're the schmucks that are paying for the whole thing. Today, European Council President Donald Tusk urged Mr. Trump to soften his rhetoric. Dear America, appreciate your allies. After all, you don't have that many. And the Europe spend more on your defense. NATO allies are trying to minimize discord before the president's first summit with Russian President Vladimir Putin next week. Frankly, Putin may be the easiest of them all. Who would think? Despite Russia's aggressive moves in Ukraine and confirmed election meddling in the U.S., today the president wouldn't say if Putin was friend or foe. Uh, I really can't say right now, as far as I'm concerned, a competitor, a competitor. In between the NATO and Putin summits, the president will stop in London. He appeared to take a jab at Prime Minister Theresa May by praising her recently resigned foreign secretary, Boris Johnson. Uh, Boris Johnson's a friend of mine. He's been very, very nice to me, very supportive. And uh, I maybe we'll speak to him when I get over there. British Prime Minister Theresa May winced visibly Tuesday when asked about the president's comments that her government was in turmoil and his praise for Johnson, who resigned from May's cabinet to protest her allegedly soft approach to Brexit. The future of Brexit and other populist ideas, such as Mr. Trump's hard line on trade and NATO burden sharing, provide the backdrop to discord here in Brussels. Elaine? Major Garrett, thank you. For more, Axios reporter Shannon Vavra is in Washington. Shannon, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So this is not the first time the president has taken aim at NATO, but these jabs come a day before the president will meet the group's leaders. How do you think that will affect the tone of this meeting? It honestly sets up the meeting to be a little bit tense at this point. And what we're hearing at Axios is that it's NATO allies' worst fear for Trump to show up and continue lambasting them for not meeting their 2 percent pledge and then flip around and have that one-on-one -on -one meeting with Putin uh, and have that be a really positive meeting where he might potentially give up some security uh, issues. I want to ask you more about that in a moment. But first, the president said that he thinks the U.S. and its NATO allies will be able to work something out. What specifically do you think that president President Trump was referencing there. It has been rumored that he would bring up some sort of a troop commitment from the U.S. as a condition for continued U.S. Uh, contributions to the collective defense pool. What we're hearing from the White House is that's not necessarily going to come up, uh, in particular in reference to Germany. So it remains to be seen what that looks like. But in particular, we know that the pledge originally to reach that 2 percent came up in 2006 and again in 2014. So it's possible that he'll just continue harping on that. Well, Shannon, going back to Vladimir Putin, remind us, first of all, of the origins of the NATO alliance. Why was it formed in the first place? And also, why is the notion of a U.S. president sitting down with a Russian president so worrisome for NATO allies? NATO allies do tend to fear when Trump starts speaking about Putin as if he is a really close friend and when he says things like, we have good chemistry and we vibe together, because NATO was created in the first place to defend, uh, to prevent uh, aggressions from Russia. And in 2014, when they got together and said they were going to pledge that 2 percent in defense spending, it was particularly in the focus of a resurgent Russia. And we see Russia, after, you know, annexing Crimea illegally and going into Ukraine and having aggressions there, uh, it's particularly a concern for NATO allies at this point that Trump is open to that meeting at this point. Well, before his meeting with President Putin, President Trump is making a stop in London. What kind of reception is President Trump expected to get in the U.K.? 
There are some planned protests, and what we're hearing at Axios is that some of the authorities in London and in the U.K. are going to try to keep Trump as far away from possible as those. And we even saw today the U.S. Embassy uh, over in the U.K. urging Americans to stay away from those kinds of protests. So there'll be an interesting dynamic to watch there. All right. A lot to look forward to. Shannon Vavra with Axios. Thanks so much, Shannon. Thanks for having me.